feet. The true stroke of genius in the Vautret Type A lay in its direct drive transmission at a time when most automobiles relied on complex belt-driven or chain-driven systems, often with cumbersome multi-speed gearboxes, Louis Renault introduced something elegantly simple and remarkably effective. His innovation allowed for a direct connection between the engine and the rear wheels in top gear. This meant that when the car was in its highest gear, there was no power loss through intermediate gears or inefficient friction drives. The power flowed directly, almost seamlessly, from the engine straight to the differential. This was a profound departure from the norm, offering a much more refined and efficient driving experience for the operator. It was an engineering marvel that set a new benchmark. The beauty of the direct drive system wasn't just its novelty, it was its tangible benefits. By eliminating the need for a complex gearbox in top gear, the Voiret Type A achieved significantly enhanced mechanical efficiency. Traditional multi-gear systems, particularly in their early iterations, suffered from considerable friction and power loss as energy was transferred through various cogs and shafts. Louis Renault's design minimized these losses, resulting in more of the engine's modest 0.75 horsepower reaching the wheels. This meant the vehicle could accelerate more smoothly, maintain speed more easily, and operate with greater fuel economy, a crucial advantage for a nascent technology. This ingenious simplification also contributed to greater reliability and reduced manufacturing complexity, making the car more accessible and practical for early adopters. The fate of Louis Renault and his nascent automotive venture was sealed on a cold Christmas Eve, December 24, 1898. On this significant day, a family friend, Monsieur Emile Thurnauer, purchased the very first Voiturette Type A. The transaction took place after Thurnauer was reportedly so impressed with the vehicle's performance and Louis's daring drive up Rue La Pique on Montmartre, demonstrating its superior hill climbing ability, a notable feat for the time, given the engine's modest power. This wasn't merely a personal sale, it was the symbolic birth of the Renault company. Monsieur Thurnauer's decision to buy represented the first commercial validation of Louis Renault's engineering genius and entrepreneurial spirit, transforming a hobby into a viable business with immense potential. This single purchase catalyzed everything that followed. The success of that initial sale on Christmas Eve quickly garnered attention and orders from more voiturettes. This burgeoning demand signaled to Louis Renault that his venture had potential far beyond a small workshop.